This is Katherine Nightingale at Chattanooga State Community College. This video is for Calculus 3, Math 2110, Section 11.6. The topic is graphing cylinders in three dimensions. A cylinder in three dimensions is a surface obtained by tracing a generating curve along a straight line. An equation that's missing a variable in R3 will result in a cylinder. The two-dimensional graph of the function is called the generating curve of the cylinder, and the cylinder expands along the axis of the missing variable. So if you had an equation with just an x and a z in it, it would expand along the y-axis. Here's our first example, z equals y squared. And what we want to do is we want to think about what the generating curve looks like. It looks like a parabola on the y-z axis. z equals y squared. So this is called our generating curve. And now notice that our equation is missing an x, meaning there's no restriction on x. So x can be anything. What this means is that the parabola z equals y squared will expand along the x-axis and create a cylinder that's parabolic in nature. So let's go ahead and graph this in three dimensions. We have our x, y, and z axes, and then we have the negative x-axis as well. If we look at our generating curve, the parabola, we have it um, on the yz plane and what we want to do is put that parabola anywhere on the x-axis and so what happens is I get this um, parabolic cylinder expanding along and I end up with this nice um, graph and it expands both directions along the x-axis. So that's the basic idea on how to graph cylinders, which are any function in three dimensions that are missing a variable or only have two variables present. Let's look at one more example of cylinders, and that is um, 4x squared plus y squared equals 36. And notice there's no restriction on z, so z can be anything. So our graph will expand along the z-axis. If we graph our generating curve, we'll end up with an ellipse. Let's get this into a form that you're used to looking at. So in um, pre-calculus, our ellipse equations always were equal to 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by 36 and I get x squared over 9 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. So this tells me that my x-intercepts will be um, plus or minus 3, and my y-intercepts will be plus or minus 6. So let's go ahead and put that on our xy plane. We have negative 3 and 3 on the x-axis, negative 6 and 6 on the y-axis, and I have an ellipse that goes through all of those. Now what we want to do is put that in three dimensions. So we have our x, y, and z axes, and I'll go ahead and plot my points for the ellipse, connect them, and then trace it all the way up and down both directions of the z-axis. So I end up with this uh, elliptical tube. That concludes the lesson on cylinders, where you only have two variables present in three dimensions. Please watch the next video on quadratic surfaces um, to finish section 11.6.